Welcome to Marty's Garden, a place where you can learn how to grow fresh food, organic food in your backyard. In today's video, we're going to discuss how to solve the top common seven problems in worm farms today. The compost worm can easily take care of your garden by spreading vital nutrients around in its castings. It even moves the microbes around, and that's a part of the droppings, the castings as well. But how do we get them right so we can move them from the worm farm into the garden to create the right environment? Well, first, we've got to get our worm farms correct and solve all those little problems that, you know, we have along the way. So problem number one is overfeeding guys and this problem creates actually future problems for other things in your worm farm. Now when you overfeed what happens is it gets smelly, it becomes sour, it can become acidic and it can attract nasty pests such as ants and cockroaches and all different types of little creepy crawlies that like to hang around in worm farms when there's too much food in them. So what you need to do is go and pull out some of the food in there, leave enough for them to eat, just a little tiny bit then come and check back the next day and see how much they're eating. And then just start feeding them slowly, slowly, but surely. And then you won't have problems. What happens is if you build up and put too much food, you get these layers, right? And so when you put the water in, these layers stay nice and dry. And then the ants and everything will come and feed and hover on top and the cockroaches and stuff. And then you've got uh, future problems that come on. So one way to solve this for overfeeding is to actually just stay away from putting too much food in at first and get used to how much food you're going to put into your worm farms and watch them over time and then keep feeding that way and if you're really worried just put in some newspaper start wetting that down a tiny little bit of food they'll come up and eat the newspaper they won't get hungry because they'll be eating the bedding and at the same time eating that bit of newspaper and the food that you give them so let's get into problem number two so problem number two, guys, is the right food, finding the right food to feed them. And the wrong foods are things like citrus and onions. They will eat it, but they really don't like it. And it can create more problems in the farm down below over time. So you're better off just skipping that type of food and just giving them other stuff. Now, the smaller you chop it up, the basically the quicker it'll start to break down and then the worms will start getting it. See, they actually eat the little fungi and stuff that's growing on the side of the food and as it starts fermenting and that, then they start breaking it down. So worms like something that's already starting to decompose and they're actually eating the decomp decomposition off the side uh, of the food. So I highly recommend that you just stay away from anything like cheeses and meats you're going to attract more flies and different bad things in the farm. And the worms don't eat that at all. And if you can get a chance to get a bit of leaf litter and throw that in there as well, then you start providing a little bit of habitat, break up a little bit of uh, newspaper and stuff and fluff it up and then wet it down. And they'll come through and aerate that and eat that as well. So that's a great way to get your farm actually rolling along is by providing the right types of food and other foods such as uh, grains and legumes and things that have got high in protein will also get them going into a bit of a feeding frenzy so they lay more eggs they like a lot of protein if they've got protein they will breed more and you'll get more worms and then your worms will eat more food and you get more castings so problem number three is the bedding Actually, lots of worm farmers get this wrong, and even I did right at the very beginning of my first farm. And I used a cheap type of peat, which wasn't really very good at all, and the worms seemed to avoid it as much as they could and hardly even chewed through it. And over the years, I figured out that actually this type of cheap peat, cocoa peat, is actually full of salt, and it just takes ages and ages for the water to flush through it, flushing the farm, flushing the farm, until eventually it gets rid of all the salts and then the worms will start moving into it so they avoid it like the plague. So I recommend that you use a good quality peat if you are using that, a cocoa peat, in your worm farms. Another type of bedding that I highly recommend is the mushroom compost because they just love that stuff. And it looks basically it's straw and chicken manure and a few other things, put a bit of blood and bone and different stuff in it and the worms will feed on that when they're hungry and they're not looking for other foods and they can burrow through it easily. It actually breaks down over time and then it becomes a pliable, great worm casting that's really, really fertile. 
So the bedding is super important. And also the bedding is obviously the top layers of where your worm farm is. So one thing about the bedding that I've found that I've started using recently is I'm putting either straw or sugar cane uh, on the top level about yay high and fluffing it up and just wetting it down. And as that's starting to decompose, they really like it. And I'm finding that that's really possibly the way to go and just to create that aeration and the little places from the wiggle and hide and it just seems to give them uh, just a more of a natural type of habitat. So I'm out here in the early hours of the morning because I wanted to get some worms out of my worm farm here. I've just put some in and basically what I'm doing is I want to keep this worm farm cool so I'm going to put some water through it this morning. It's best times of the morning and the evenings to put the water through. Apparently if it's if the worm farm hot and you put water through it, it takes the oxygen out. So that's probably a very bad thing to do. Now I've got some worms in here and these are just little baby worms really. Uh, they're not old uh, at all. Uh, I'd probably say they're probably three weeks old, something like that. And I've got about probably a hundred in my hand all wrapped up here. And I really need to put them back because they don't like being out of the worm farms uh, very long at all. So I'm going to put them back in there to talk about the temperatures. Because basically, look, worms love the same temperatures that we, as we do. And in Australia, around about 18 to 24 is the optimum temperature really for these guys. Now... Once it starts getting very hot, they start burrowing down. They start sort of like hiding in the corners and looking for the wet spots, getting underneath little bits of newspaper, doing anything they can really to keep cool. And they go quiet. And it's the same with the cooler times. If it's too cold, they basically will go down deep and wrap themselves up and try and find a little blanket to sort of hang out. So I find that I get my, the best performance out of spring and autumn really. But in winter, you can actually put more food in and warm it up because the composting process will warm the worm farm up. But in the summer, what you've got to do is you've got to be a bit careful because if it gets too hot and you're putting the compost in and the compost is getting warm as it's breaking down, that can warm up your worm farm too much as well. So consider how much food you're putting in in the seasons, uh, keeping it in the shade as much as possible and not putting too much compost uh, broken down stuff as well as the bedding because that can still be breaking down and create heat. Put a little layer of straw or something like that. I find that I'm just putting newspaper at the moment and I'm going to be putting some more uh, sugar cane uh, in there very shortly. Alright little fellas, I'll put some water for you soon. You'll be feeling great. I really love my worms. Seven hearts these guys have got. How could you not love them? So let's get into number five when we're talking about pests. So we're going right back to the beginning about too much food and overfeeding. Well, that's one of the problems that generally happens with pests and can create other problems as I discussed, which we're going to talk about in a second. Now, one thing that I did actually, I've got a little slot at the end of my farm and I forgot to uh, put the little slot in where the air breathing holes are and I found a mouse was getting in there and eating my worms. So if you've got some mice around, sometimes they will get in there and they like to eat and feed on the protein. But anyway, it all comes down to really too much food and overfeeding creates many pest problems. Okay, going into number six is water. Now, a lot of people in the beginning stages forget or they don't know that you shouldn't use chlorinated town water on your worms and this will burn them or fry the eggs and will kill them over time unfortunately and make them really sick and then they won't breed on and you're going why are my worms just not breeding and they're falling back the other way so what we do is we fill a nice drum full of water over a 24 hour period and the chlorine dissipates out of that and boom you've got pretty good water you can use if you've got a bubbler around an oxygenator something for a water tank or something like that it takes about two hours for the water to get out. Now if you put too much water in, it can become soggy, can become anaerobic, and you can drown your worms, and it's when worms start getting a bit pink in colour, and yeah, they can start dying and things. So you wanna have a lot of oxygen for your system, you wanna keep your farm not too over wet, not too dry, just nice and moist, and if it's dry, you need to soak it, and add more uh, leafy products such as lettuce and things like that. If it's too wet, don't put things like lettuce and cucumbers and stuff in. So if it's too wet, cut back on the wet foods and put in more carbon. 
All right, so moving in to number seven, which I've got on my list here. Didn't know I had the list down there, did you guys? Actually, I'm pretty good, I remember most of the time, but I did want to make a mistake on this one, is the far being too acidic. See, what happens is, again, it comes down to feeding, the type of foods we're putting in. Is it acidic food? Are we putting in too much of it? And are we allowing enough oxygen to get through our worm farms? Is it compacting down so it's becoming anaerobic? Then things can start becoming a bit acidic. And generally you can tell just by the smell. If you're putting your hand in and grabbing a bit of castings and a bit of that compost and smelling it, just got that earthy smell, generally pretty fine. But if you start getting a bit of that funky, sour smell, you know that it's going anaerobic and start becoming acidic as well. So you can get little... Uh, testers from the pet food shops and from uh, nurseries and things like that to test the pH and generally you just put in a, a bit of uh, powder they've got certain uh, ones you can buy from the shops which contain a bit of dolomite or a bit of lime powder and that will put it back right in the balance all right so listen guys if you've got anything else that I would have missed because I'm sure I don't know everything about this and it's such a huge thing to cover right let us know down below in the comment section if I've missed anything, something else that you'd like to add in there, or if you've got any questions about worm farming and the problems that you're having with in your farms at home. Have a great day, happy gardening, and we'll see you at the next video real soon. I look forward to hearing from you down below. Bye for now. This is why my praying mantis, and watch what he does when I do this. Tried to get you before. He's a funny little fella, isn't he?